So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this diamond generator inside Blender. So we are going to use geometry nodes for this. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. So as you can see, this is a diamond that we generated. And you can change um, the polygon count. You can change the height of this. So this is going to teach you a lot about geometry nodes and you will understand how everything works. So let's start with this. So let's start making this. Okay, so I'm in a new Blender file. So we are going to start with the default cube. We are going to release the camera and the light. Select the cube. And in order to go in the geometry nodes, you can go right here. So this is the geometry node layout. And uh, select the cube and add a new geometry node. And you can change the name of this to diamond generator. This looks pretty good. You can see this is very similar to the node graph of the shader editor. So hold control and you can just unlink this and your cube will disappear because this geometry input is the cube mesh. So you can see if I connect it back, the cube is right here. And if I disable this, the cube disappears. So we don't want the cube. We want to add our own geometry to create the diamond. So you can do this in many ways. Again, this is my way of doing this. Okay, so first I'm going to add something called as a simple curve line. So you can press shift A to search. And then you can search for line. So we have the mesh line and the curve line. They both should work, but I'm going to use the curve line for this video. So this is the curve line. And you need to connect the curve uh, output right here into the geometry. And there we go. We have the curve right here. So this is a simple line and I need to convert this line to a point. So just press zero here, just change this to zero. And now you have a point. So basically this is going to be the tip of the diamond. So after that, you can press shift A again and you can search for a circle. Add a curve circle right here. And if you connect this circle, right here, you can see that you have a circle. So this is very simple. Now we need to merge these two together. So for that, there's a node called join geometry. So just add the join geometry node right here. And you can just connect this right here. So now we have the point and the circle. Change the resolution of the circle to 12. And uh, we need to move the circle up on the Z axis. So for that, shift A and you can add a node called the transform node. So this is the transform node. Just add it right here. And as you can see, the transform node is really quite self-explanatory. So it contains all the transform uh, information. So in this transform, we need to change the Z position of the circle. So you can just type one here. And as you can see, the circle is one units up on the Z axis. After that, you can press shift and select both of these nodes and shift D duplicate this. Duplicate the join geometry by shift D and connect it right here. And you can just connect this circle right here. So now we have joined two circles and I'm going to move this um, downwards something like this. So point eight works fine. After that, you can select the first circle curve right here. So that's the top one. And you can reduce the radius to point six. I mean, this looks pretty good. Let's try point six five. Yeah, point six five works better. And you could change the resolution of this to eight. This looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have essentially made the blueprint and the basic structure of the diamond. So let me show you how this works. So we have a curve line that's converted into a point right here. So that is the bottom part of the diamond. We have this part, which is the top part of the diamond right here. 
and we have this circle which is the middle part of the diamond. So now after we have created this structure, we need to fill in uh, all the faces and the polygons. So shift A, you can just search for convex. So we have a convex file right there, just add it right here. So as you can see, the convex file node basically fills in all the polygons. And now from this thing, from a basic simple structure, by just adding this node, we get a full polygon shape. And the most amazing part is that this is completely procedural. So you can basically change the radius of this. You can change the resolution of this. I mean, there are infinite possibilities here. So this is pretty cool. I also added a transform node between the curve line and the geometry. And that will give me the option to like change the position of this. So this is basically uh, important for changing the height. By default, you can leave this at zero. Now let's quickly make this into a diamond generator. So by that, what I mean is let's make this into a modifier. So you will be able to select this modifier and you will be able to add this modifier to any object and that will turn into a diamond. So let's make that. So to convert this into a modifier, we are going to use the group input node. And we need to basically store all of these values that we are going to change into the group input. So let's select the curve circle. So basically this is the top circle of the diamond and we are changing the resolution, right? So connect the resolution right here into the group input and that will create a new socket called resolution because this had the name resolution. So let's take the group input and let's press the N key that will open up this menu. Let's go to group. Under the inputs, we have that resolution. So we basically just made a variable called resolution. So you can change the name of this variable. So let's change that to. So we have changed the name of this to small resolution. So this is the resolution of the small circle. Let's do the same thing for the bigger circle. So let's drag it right here and create a new pin. Select that. And you can just change the name of this to big resolution. Lastly, let's go to the curve line. We need to convert this uh, Z translation. So you can see the Z uh, position of this point. So that controls the height of the diamond. So for that, we can't just add this thing right here because this is a vector and we don't want to change the X and the Y. We only want to change the Z. We need to split this so you can search for combine and we need the combined XYZ node. And as you can see, this has a vector output and we are going to connect this right here. So just drag the Z right here because we are going to change the Z. So let's change the name of this to be organized. So we basically converted all of the properties that are changing into a variable. So after we have converted all of those properties into variables, you can select the diamond and you can go to the modifiers tab and you can see that geometry nodes is a modifier and we have our three properties here. So we have our three variables exposed. Now you can add a new object right here and you can select a geometry node object right here and just select the diamond. So there we go. That's how powerful this is. I mean, this procedural modifier will essentially change any object into a procedural diamond. Yeah. So that's about it. So I was basically experimenting in Blender and I found out that you can make some cool things with geometry nodes. So I wanted to share this with you guys. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.